can you talk maybe a little bit about how, you know, how time consuming it was and how did you manage to keep the business growing while you were doing this? Yeah. Yeah. So back to what you said, and, and then I'll address that. Matt is my hero. Yeah. Uh, like, you know what I mean? I, for the rest of my life, um, I, I will have, uh, I'll have nothing but gratitude for him because he, he's, he was, he was so amazing through the process. And every time I see him, like I, I mean, I give him the biggest hug and like, he's just, he's just an awesome guy. And it's always so good to have people like that in your corner. And, yeah. and like I said before, you can't do that without people who, uh, who have your back and, and guide you and you have to trust people to guide you and you have to listen to people and you don't know everything. You have to ask questions and, and, and learn. Um, but you have to have experts who, who can help guide you through that process. Um, and then as far as like running, as far as running the company goes while it was happening, it was pretty interesting, right? Because I try to take what I think is somewhat of a different approach to it. Um, I had just hired, uh, uh, Mike, Carol, who, uh, who became our head of growth at that time. And Mike also came from Nutshell. So Mike joined um, before the, uh, about eight months before the acquisition, Mike joined MSC as our head of growth. Mm -hmm. And um, Mike was at Nutshell, uh, had the same role at Nutshell that I did. Mike and I worked together because Nutshell hired MSC after I left Nutshell. So I worked directly with Mike. Again, someone that like, I couldn't do it without Mike, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. it, that's, that's kind of like the, I think the, the, the real story of all this is like, you've got to find people to lean on. So as I'm going through this process, um, Mike had such great experience that it allowed me to focus, uh, kind of have a dual focus. Yeah. Mike was, Mike was helping running the business. Mike was helping run the business. Uh, and then I was, you know, spending half my time in the acquisition. And the unique approach I took to it is I actually pulled in my, so I pulled Mike in yeah. to the acquisition and I pulled my, uh, one of my directors in Marina, who I know wanted experience in acquisitions mm -hmm. and, and she wanted to learn how to build and sell a company. It was something she had always talked about. So what I did was I actually pulled them into a lot of the conversations. I had them help me create the 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 our our kind of like pitch deck on what we do when we pitch to the entire phenomenon team they were on those calls marina was 27 years old at the time and it was one of those things where like i thought about when i was 27 years old at peanut labs and the experience that i had and and i wanted to to kind of pay it forward to to marina and give her that experience of uh an acquisition she actually left and just was part of another acquisition which was super cool yeah so cool. um so anyway, uh, we, so I pulled them into the conversations. Uh, we, they, they were on all the calls. Um, and yeah, it was, it was difficult to do both, but it took, um, I think it took about eight months for the deal to close. Yeah. So we, I think we both slow played it a little bit and it was, mm -hmm. it was a long, mm -hmm. the negotiations took quite a while. Yeah. So yeah, a couple things that, that jump out at me is that, a, a, a lot of times founders have to decide who do they bring in the process that works at their company? What, um, you know, which employees certainly like if you have a CFO, that's going to be a very important role, but you clearly had some people that you could really lean on that could operate the business when you needed them to, and could be integral in the, the M and a process and that they were going to get something out of it.